So I'm going to talk about uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet and clustering. And uh, I want to point out that uh, on the APRO website, there is a white paper that goes into much more detail than the slides I'm going to present. And also, I believe they have a physical copy at the IRIS booth. Um, if, you're, if you're so intrigued with what I have to say, uh, you can go get it and read it right away. Um, I, uh, I'm a consultant uh, with my little company called Basement Supercomputing, and I do a lot of uh, testing and white paper work. I also write for Linux Magazine and um, uh, some Cluster Monkey website. So uh, I'm a big believer of clustering is all about buying what you need to solve your problem. And that's why, even though there's a lot of InfiniBand, uh, 10 gig E is actually, I think, going to be a big player in clustering. So, uh, when I talk to people about Ethernet, they, they're a little skeptical, and, and uh, why do people still use Ethernet? You have things like uh, Mellanox, uh, InfiniBand, and the, the reasons I came up with was Ethernet's everywhere. And people are familiar with it. It's low cost and commodity, easy cabling, plug and play, and it works good enough. And that's kind of key for most people is it works good enough. The 56% uh, of the recent top 500, not this week's, but the one in, in uh, the summer, was still used Ethernet. And um, I think uh, the, one of the other reasons is it kind of comes on the servers. So it, it's there, and a lot of people use what's there. Now, I, I want to say to be politically correct, InfiniBand is good stuff. This is not about don't use InfiniBand. If you need InfiniBand, you're not sitting here because you're saying, I need InfiniBand, I'm not going to use gig -E or or 10 gig -E. Um, so if you need high performance and latency, then you use InfiniBand. There are some people that don't need that, and they'd rather put their money into more nodes and less into the network. And there's different solutions in the market, and um, what I said earlier, clustering is about choice. So you can decide where you want to put your money, and that's where I think one of the advantages of Ethernet is it's, it's a known simple solution and if you're not looking for high performance networking it's a great fit. So predominant Ethernet obviously is, is uh, Gigi and um, 10 Gigi is here, it's been here for a while. The key thing though is, um, and as the previous talk uh, mentioned, actually it was very good covering of the interconnect and the cabling and so forth, um, that the uh, the thing now is that Cat5, uh, I'm sorry, Cat6A or um, 5E, actually 5E will work, Cat6, cabling is available, which is your standard Ethernet cable. So it's a little plug, it bends, it clicks, it's easy to use. Um, and it's uh, the prices are coming down, and it's a similar thing that happened with Gigi um, when it first came out. It was very expensive, and then the prices started coming down and because of the commodity push. And the, the cabling is what everybody's familiar with. There's also the, the SFP Plus, which can uh, was mentioned before, you can use within a cabinet. It's very inexpensive. And the nice thing about the, the copper solutions is you don't need optical transceivers, so it lowers the cost. A again, who needs 10 gig E? Well, applications that are not very latency sensitive. Um, as I mentioned before, people who want to put money into nodes and not network, and this you need to be a little careful because the more multi-cores you have on a node, the more the I.O. need on the node is going to increase. So you want to be careful with that. And the other thing, which I think is the, the big driver here, is the simple cluster. People just want to kind of plug it together and get it working. And as we talked, was mentioned, there's RDMA, there's some other protocols you can use um, to improve performance, but you can always you can always create a baseline cluster with gig -E or 10 gig -E and get things working pretty much the day you get it. You get the hardware. So um, the other thing why people like this is simple is everything runs over the same wire and this is this is exactly the same way the first clusters were built. Um, only substitute fast Ethernet in um, for 10 gig -E. 
And it, again, it was just simple. You had one wire connecting everything, all the services go over the same wire, and it, it just worked. It plugged in and worked. Um, the, the nice thing now, as compared to years ago, is um, that uh, you can buy these little blade chassis, and you just happen to be in a vendor who has them here. I just I picked the right one, I guess. And um, the uh, so you can you can buy the, uh, the chassis, and this, this is the data on that. The you know holds ten blades, Intel or AMD. And what's nice is uh, in the white paper I did, there's little formulas recipes for how many chassis and switches and so forth. So it's all pretty much there, and the, the only thing you need is the switches, obviously cabling, and the um, uh, interface cards, and some of them are on, can, can be get on the, gotten on the motherboards now. Um, and then the other building blocks, so obviously ours are switches, and you'll notice pretty much all the companies who are not known for 10 gig E, we're not known in the past, we're now known for 10 gig E. Um, and uh, well, Miricom has considered themselves a high performance 10 gig E company. Mellanox supports 10 gig E, as does Intel. So you have a, a choice of, of a mix available to use. And that's it.